Hi, I'm G. Welcome back to my art channel. And a while ago, one of my subscribers suggested that I should do something other than flowers, that I should paint something different using the watercolor pencils. So in this video, I'm showing you how to paint this wooden horse using Albrecht Dürer watercolor pencils. So the first thing that I do is make a pencil sketch for my reference photo and then I take that pencil sketch and I light boxed it and I did all of the outlines using a watercolor pencil so I wasn't going to be using any graphite on the final piece. So as I go into a close up here I'm going to start with the eye and you can see the outlines that I've done a little bit more clearly here and I'm starting with this pencil and this is a really nice raw umber kind of colour and I've decided this is going to kind of be my base um, colour that I'm going to build the other colours around, make it warmer with some reds or make it darker with some browns but this is going to be my kind of um, light to mid tone and you can see as I'm putting this on to begin with I am being a bit tentative, I'm being a bit careful with it, I am not putting on tons of colour yet because I've still got that thing in the back of my mind that with watercolour pencils when you add lots of colour it goes all greasy and dodgy when you start adding the water so I'm, I'm putting on um, almost a kind of a lightish um, first coat and then you can see me adding this which is warm grey number five and this is one of the warm greys that came in the tin of pencils. I was quite impressed at the fact that they had warm greys, a bit like you might have markers. So I put some of that on, and then you can see me adding this, which is my dark brown for the shadows. This is walnut brown. And I'm putting a bit of this on, but again, you can see I'm being a bit too careful. And for some of these areas that should be quite shadowed, I should be adding this in a bigger, um, more bright quantity. But I'm not too worried because it's early days and I often start a project like this uh, quite a tentative and quite careful kind of fashion when I'm doing the very first part of it. So I want to get in with my brush and start reacting this first layer of colours. I'm, I'm a little bit impatient. So you can see me adding water with a synthetic brush. This is a size 4 synthetic round. Uh, graduate by Dale Rowney and as you can see me adding the water reacting the colors and starting to push them and blend them and move them around I can already tell that it's too light and I'm definitely going to have to go in here and be a bit bolder and a bit braver and uh, darken and deepen some of the colors that I've got here otherwise it's just going to look a bit too pastel but that's okay like I said careful start so I'm all right with the fact that I'm going to have to do that but I haven't really tried layering these colors that much so far, so I'm hoping that it's going to work on this uh, hot press paper that I've decided to use to do this picture. So here you can see me going in and adding um, more color, putting a second layer of color on top of what I've already got there and being a bit bolder with it. Uh, I'm putting some of that raw umber on and now you can see me adding some of that walnut brown and again trying to be brave and put a little bit more, I'm still not being as brave as I really should be as you'll see I get much more brave later on. But do you notice that I've changed the brush at this point? As I add the water and react it the second time, I'm now using a sable size 3. And there are a few reasons for me doing this. Um, number one was I felt there was a bit too much water coming off the size 4 brush and that was diluting the colors a little bit. Size 3 was a bit smaller and also this one has got a much more pointy tip whereas uh, you might you know, be able to notice when I was using the round it didn't have the synthetic round, it didn't have that much of a pointy tip so it wasn't going to allow me to get and push some of the colour into these nice detailed areas. So I changed the brush for those basic reasons. Here you can see me adding some more colour, this is more of the raw umber and this is inside the eye. So there's going to be quite a bit of shadow inside the eye which is basically kind of looks like a knot of wood, a chunk that's come out. And here you can see me adding um, an extra colour to the three that I've already used. This is Venetian red and then I'm also going in with the walnut brown. But there's this kind of knot of wood, this bit that's fallen out and that is deeply shadowed and it looks like the eye of this wooden horse. So I've got to have a lot of shadow in this particular section to give it that depth so that you can see that this is this focal point and this is the eye of this wooden animal. So I'm gradually getting a bit braver here, applying much more of the dark brown at this point and then also a bit more of the Venetian red so it's going to be a much warmer kind of shadow and brown in here. So I'm going in with the size 3 sable brush here and I am just again reacting the colours 
quickly and carefully. I don't really want them to blend with the layer that goes underneath. I don't know if they will, but I don't want to take that chance. So I'm working quite quickly and I'm working from light areas up into the dark areas um, with not a ton of water on the brush. I actually keep dipping the brush in the water and then just patting it very gently on some tissue paper that I've got next to me. So that I'm taking um, the most of the water off. So it's not exactly dry brushing what I'm doing here, but I am reacting the colors with not as much water as I would use normally. So with the eye pretty much done, even though I'm thinking I might return to it and darken the shadows a bit, it allows me to move outwards from the eye. I sort of treat the eye as the center and then I start sort of moving outwards uh, like ripples on a pond and doing the rest of the picture. And you can already see that I'm putting on color much more um, boldly, much more brightly. Look at that shadow that I'm doing now. I'm using a lot more of that walnut brown there because I realize I've got to add more color on the first pass instead of relying on second and third coats of, of um, the color if I'm going to get this working the way I want it to do. So each time I'm putting uh, the color on I'm trying to draw one of these pieces of wood that makes up the whole shape of the horse. So I'm using my four colors to do that. So I've got the raw umber which gives me that lovely warm kind of brown. I'm using a fair bit of the gray the warm gray number five, and then my dark deep shadows are the walnut brown number five. And if anything needs a little bit warming up and, and to have a slightly more orangey look to the wood, that's when the Venetian red comes in, and that's when I'm adding that. Using the red provides a really nice contrast to the gray. Uh, you might already be thinking, why are you doing a wooden horse? Why are you using gray? Well, it's a horse that has been out in the elements and it's been weathered quite a bit. So some parts of it uh, have almost had all of the color bleached out of the wood. And the warm gray number five really helps me get that kind of silvery weathered wood effect that you need on some parts of the horse. But then on other parts, which maybe haven't been weathered so bad, there is a really nice warmth to the browns. So the Venetian red really allows me to work with the other the colors and get a much much warmer effect uh, some of which you can see mostly around some of the shadows that I do you'll see me put in some Venetian red and then I blend that in with the walnut brown and it does get a really really nice warm brown color I think one of the things that attracted me to this um, piece to want to do a painting of it was not just the contrast in terms of the colors the reds and then the grays but also the contrast in the shadows. I mean, what makes this piece is seeing that all these pieces of wood have been nailed together to form the shape uh, of this horse. And, you know, a lot of how the picture works is making sure that my shadows are up to scratch, that they are nice and solid and dark and other areas are light to give you that idea of three dimensions that, you know, something has been nailed in front of this piece and this piece has been nailed in front of this piece. And that's what you know, trying to get those shadows and that really nice contrast between the really dark areas and then the light areas, that's what it's all about. And if I don't get those right, then I'm pretty sure that the painting is going to fail. I really enjoy doing the ears of the horse. You can see me working on now the way that that wood looked as though it had been carved and chipped and whittled away and trying to get that effect with the greys. That was a good challenge and one that I really, really enjoyed. As I'm working through the rest of it, you can see me deepening and darkening some of the shadow areas again, but also tackling some of the pieces of wood that looked as though bits of bark were coming off and you had those little delicate little shadow areas and sort of sharp white highlights that you had to leave if you were going to get that effect of this looking like it was rugged, rough wood. So this piece you can see me working on now is the neck and it's underneath where the horse's head is. So it's in a lot of shadow. So, you know, I said earlier I had to be a lot braver applying my colors. Well, this is where you see that really has to pay off. So I'm putting a lot of the raw umber down here. I'm also adding a lot of the Venetian red. So it's a much warmer, but also darker, deeper kind of shadow on this neck area. And again, that's to make sure that if I, I've got that contrast, then the actual horse's snout and its muzzle, they will stand out because there's quite a few highlights on them. So if I made sure that this part of the neck that's underneath the head is really, really nice and dark, then hopefully it'll look as though the, um, the wooden horse's is muzzle is sort of pushing forwards and coming much more out towards us. That was the hope when I started doing that shadow and then doing these other sections. So I'm working on the muzzle now and you can see me adding some little bits to, to the shadows that I've done and left before, putting in some of those little details like the nails, the rusty nails that are holding all of this um, sculpture together. 
but you can see that there are quite a lot of grey areas on this, so suggesting weathered wood, but also um, quite a lot of highlights on there as well. These areas were some of the most challenging on the whole thing, so it's no um, accident I left them till last. Uh, they were the bigger pieces of wood, the longer pieces of wood, so I had to do quite a lot of sort of upwards, downwards brush strokes to, to get the direction of the colour and the streaks on the wood to go the right way. Um, and also to make sure that the highlights were okay. These are probably the areas of wood that had the most highlights on as well. So there was a lot of area that I needed to leave and actually not paint and not drag the paint into when I was doing these sections. This wooden horse sculpture was really different for me uh, and I love doing something different. I love getting my teeth into the textures of this and also those warm earthy colors. Um, so let me know in the comments below what you thought of the, the video and the picture. And um, if there's anything you wanna see me demonstrate, again, leave a comment, let me know what that is and I'll have a go at doing that. Uh, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share because it all helps the channel and check out some of my previous watercolor videos right here. Thanks for watching.